Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Science Live. We're coming to you again from Discovery Hall here at the Creation Museum. And as you might have guessed from that intro shot, we're going to be talking more about bones today. So I'm joined by Dr. Jennifer Rivera today. She's here, and we're going to continue what we talked about earlier in the week. I believe that was Monday. Mm -hmm. And from our Monday episode, we talked about anthropology so that was our big science word of the day mm -hmm. so give them a reminder of what anthropology yes. is so there are basically two types of anthropology cultural anthropology which is studying people groups and their geographical location and their customs uh, and then there's something called physical anthropology now physical anthropology is the study of human biological and physiological characteristics and how those characteristics can change through development and so when we talked on Monday, we talked about how when we look at forensic anthropology, when we're focusing on physical anthropology here, that we can learn different things from the skeletal structure. Uh, we talked about how we can determine gender, and that's what we focused on mm -hmm. Monday. Also age as well, yep. you can determine age. Uh, if someone's healthy or not, you can actually see if there's been fractures that have healed and you know other injuries and things in their bones. Yep. Uh, we can also estimate height, and we're gonna learn how to do that today. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so our, our topic today then um, is anthropology. So that word, if you think of the, the root of that word, anthropo, is referring to man. So anytime you see that in any type of big word, um, I think of some of the different names they've given to the supposed missing link species mm -hmm. and include some mm -hmm. of that language in it. Mm -hmm. Anthropology is the discussion of man. And so we're going to think about um, different characteristics of people. And so we talked about physical characteristics and physical anthropology, looking at bone structures and being able to determine age and gender and all of those types of things. Uh, so if you'll remember with um, age, we talked about in, in the bones, we looked at some different structures in the bones. We said there were growth plates, that epiphyseal region here in the bone. You can see this one is totally closed up. There's no gap here. And that told us that this was an adult bone we looked at the shape of a pelvis. So we saw that male, a male pelvis had a V-shaped structure internally and in the pubic arch, and that a female was more open, and that's mm -hmm. primarily because of childbirth and being able to give birth to children. So all of those features help us determine um, the different age and gender. So we can use these in uh, forensic anthropology, so there we're doing forensics and studying the remains of people and trying to understand more about them. So this would happen not only in crime scene investigation, mm -hmm. but if we were doing a dig on a cultural site, of course. maybe these are um, mm -hmm. ancient remains that we're examining. Caves, we can find all they these often caves. find remains in caves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll be talking more about forensic anthropology and especially today about ethnicities. All right, yes. so why don't you go ahead and, and keep running with the with All right, the so we are going to take a look at this last uh, piece of information we can learn from looking at bones, and that is ethnicity today. So we are going to be learning how we can look at different traits to determine that. But before we do that, we need to first talk about why we find ethnic differences. Okay, let's Where do, do people groups come from? Yeah. All right, so we need to go back to something we call the Seven Seas of History, mm -hmm. uh, and we have a wonderful walkthrough here at the Creation Museum, and everyone should really come check it out when we reopen as yes. well. But our first sea, as you can see up here, is creation, all right? And so the Bible tells us in Genesis 1 that God created everything in six days, about 6,000 years ago. Yes. He did create Adam and Eve in his image on day six of the creation week, and at the end of creation, everything was very good. It was perfect. But unfortunately, they disobeyed. God's commands uh, and brought sin into the world, right? And because of that, we now have death and we have suffering and we have disease and pandemics, right? Yeah. <laughs> because of that sea. So an original perfect creation was corrupted by the fall, by sin entering into the world. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So after corruption, Adam and Eve are then <coughs> basically kicked out of the Garden of Eden, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they did go on to have children, all right? And lots of children, all yes. right? To the point where people were disobeying God again, mm -hmm. right? And things became so increasingly evil. In fact, the Bible says continually evil all the time, basically, yes. uh, that it required judgment, 
All right, and that brings us to our third C, which is catastrophe. And that talks about the global flood, right, and Noah. So God told Noah that uh, this judgment was coming uh, and that only he was found righteous. And so uh, Noah built an ark, right? It took him about 70, 80 years to build this ark. God sent two of each animal, seven of some, to that ark, the ark of salvation. Uh, and sadly, only Noah and his immediate family uh, were saved during that global flood. All life, uh, you know, uh, animals and people uh, that breathe air in their lungs yeah. die from that global flood. We often kind of flood. say the, all of the land-dwelling, air-breathing is mm -hmm. a little way to think about all the right. things that perish. So it didn't include things like the whales in the ocean and right, those Right, because they already lived in water. Yeah. So, so Noah didn't have to bring whales on the ark. <laughs> right, no <laughs> whales on the ark. So after, they, uh, after the global flood, all right, and they got off the ark, and God told them to multiply and to spread across yeah. the face it's of the earth. It's basically a recommand, just like he had mm -hmm. given to Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Mm -hmm. He said the same thing to Noah. So it's kind of like a creation reset. Reset, right. After that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what? They did not listen to God again. It's like that sinful nature was still, still inside them. Still there, right? Still seeking to rebel against and God. And sadly, we still don't listen to God today, right? Many I people still turn case. away from God. Mm -hmm. But that takes us to our fourth C, uh, and that is confusion. All right? So they, people disobeyed God. They did not disperse across the earth, and they stayed together, right? And uh, due to man's sinful nature for self-glorification, basically, right? They decided they were going to build a tower to reach heaven, not to glorify God, that's important, right? No, but to glorify but to, themselves. Yeah, to glorify themselves, to make a name mm -hmm. for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so God had to pretty much kind of issue judgment again. Mm -hmm. And so he came down and changed their languages so they can no longer speak to each other. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so because of that, people then moved away with other people who could speak their language, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and guess what happened? They did disperse across the earth, which is what God had asked them to do originally. But they had to do it not because they wanted to. Not because they wanted because to. Because God right. brought judgment and confused their languages. Things are always easier when we just listen to God the first time, yeah. right? So here's a map, kind of a bit of a stylized map. You can see there in the center where the gold arrows are, an image of the Tower of Babel. So when we think about the idea of confusion that happens at Babel, and this was a place somewhere there, likely between the Tigris and Euphrates River, and this is the, the spot where the people spread out from. So if you go to your Bible and you read Genesis 10 and 11, this account is there, and you can actually see what we typically call the Table of Nations. And your Bible might have a more detailed map, either there in a commentary section or in the back, that talks about where all those people spread and how they divided up based on the different families and each of those families had a different language. And this is where we mm -hmm. get that idea of the people groups that spread out from the time of Babel. Right, because they're all still human, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And they all disperse from the same location. They all came from Adam right. and Eve. All came they from Adam all and Eve. came from Noah mm -hmm. and his three right. sons. Mm -hmm. So they're all still human, right? Yes. Uh, and so because they separate out into people groups, into different parts of the world, they develop certain traits, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that we find unique to, you know, individual different people groups. And we'll kind of talk about a few of those today. And it reminds me of Acts 17.26, where it tells us in the Bible that he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, right? And, so yeah. we're all just humans. So different versions translate this slightly differently. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about one blood or from one man. That concept of every one of us, and remember, this is a New Testament context where we have the, the idea of one blood coming from, or all people coming from one blood, one man, Adam. So this isn't something that we just read about in the Old Testament, but it's a New Testament concept Exactly. As well. So let's take a look at some of those differences that we do see in people groups, mm -hmm. all right? So the question today is, can bones determine ethnicity, right? All right. So the other day we asked, can they determine right. gender? Can they determine can age? age? So today we're going to say, can they determine ethnicity? And the question is, yes, yes. all right? We can, generally speaking, uh, determine ethnic group based on different traits we see in our skeletal structure. So uh, the most reliable method to do this is the skull, all right? Uh, pretty much 
the rest of the skeletal anatomy is very similar between people groups because we're all just humans, we're all just one human race, right? But we can see here uh, that the skull really is going to provide the most information. So let's take a look at some of those differences. So if we take a look at the eye orbit, okay, we can see distinct differences between European, Asian, and African. All right, so in our Europeans, their eye orbits are very oval, all right, and almost down slanted. We call it angular shaped, all right? And you can see that here, how so it we, almost yeah, slopes right downward. Slopes mm -hmm. down in this area. Now, in Asians, generally speaking, their eye orbits is very round, that space in their skeletal structure. So this space here we see looking very round. Apparently, I forgot to grab my laser pointer before we got started. And then in Africans, we find it's almost square-like and a little bit longer than we see in Asians and Europeans. All right, so there are some distinct differences here between these three basic ethnicities. And of course, we could look at other ethnic groups and see other differences as well, but we're going to focus on these, the big three today. All right, so there we go. I got my laser. Ah, there you go. All right. <laughs> So another area where we can find distinct differences uh, is in the nasal aperture, all right? So the nasal aperture is the basically the nose shape, all right? So we can see here in our Europeans, uh, it's very long, narrow, projects upward, all right? You can see it down here on the bottom, This all right? area right here. Tends to project upward with a high bridge, and the bridge is that little bone that sticks up right there that your glasses sit on, yep. if you wear so glasses. So this curve right here, you can see that's the bridge of the nose. Okay, now in our Asians, all right, we can see that it's more medium shaped, not quite as long as we see in European, and we have a medium bridge. So you can see how the bridge is just a little bit it's, shorter. Yeah, it's not okay. nearly as long. It doesn't stick out as far as you see over here in the European skull. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> then in our African, we can see it's shorter, okay, wider than the nasal aperture there and uh, that we have a very low bridge. This right? comes down almost flat. If you look here compared to even in the Asian, it looks almost flat across the face here. So these are some of the, the two most distinct differences that we find is in eye orbit and in the nose shape, all right, of the, uh, between the different ethnicities. Now here's what's really cool, is that you can actually, if you, let's say you don't have the skull, but all you find is some bones, okay, left behind. How can we still determine uh, basic characteristics on that? So we can actually take what we call the long bones to determine ethnicity, all right? So we're going to talk about how you determine height from bones, and we're going to do that with the long bones, all right? Now, if you look here on the table, we have an example of the long bones in the body, okay? We talked about the arm the other day with Dr. Purdom. So this is the long bone we call the humerus. So that's the upper arm bone. And then this is the radius and the ulna, the two bones in the forearm. So those are the long bones of the arm. And then down in the leg, we have three long bones as well. This is the femur. So this would be the bone that runs from your hip down to your knee. And then here we have, we'll go ahead and connect them together here the way they would be. This is the tibia and the fibula. And this would be a right leg bone. I know that because of this little bump down here on the tibia is going to be inside. So if you feel the inside of your ankle near the top, you'll be able to feel this little protrusion sticking out on the inside of your ankle. And then the fibula runs down the outside. And we're going to be discussing that in more detail next week with Dr. Purdom. She'll be back and we'll talk more about leg anatomy. Oh, right. excellent. So why do you think we call these the long bones? I don't know. Hmm. Maybe because they're long? They're longer than the rest of the bones, right? <laughs> so if we look at our skeleton body. here, right, we can definitely see why we call them the long bones. They are the longest bones, right, in our body, uh, with the femur being the longest bone. Yep. Okay? So we're going to be using the femur today because that's the easiest one for us to use uh, when we try to estimate height based on that bone. Mm -hmm. All right? So to do that, uh, we are going to be measuring 
Mr. Patterson. So we're going to let him demonstrate this for you. And if you're at home and you have a tape measure handy, uh, you can do this with us. If not, you can do this uh, after the presentation today. And you are going, preferably you will need a metric tape measure. Now, yes. if you don't have one, it's okay. Uh, you can use inches and then convert it, which convert I'll give you inches. the mm -hmm. conversion uh, equation for that. All right. Okay. If you don't have a flexible tape measure like this, then you could use one, uh, use a string, and then mark the string or hold the string and hold it up to a, a meter stick or a, another tape measure that you've got as well. So you don't have to have a flexible. This one works the mm -hmm. best. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to try to find the distance from the longest point of the femur from this point down to the end of the knee. Now that gets a little bit tricky because I can't measure to the inside of my hip joint. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be measuring to this protrusion right out here. You should be able to feel this little bump on the femur mm -hmm. on the outside of your leg. So if I stand here like this and I can, I run my, just down below my belt line, I feel a, a bump where I stop right there. And if I lift, I can actually feel motion. So I know I'm actually right there on the head of that, that part of the femur right there. Okay. And I can measure that. Now I could try to stand here and do this balancing like this, but it's a little <laughs> hard. So I'm going to sit down and that will actually help. So I'm going to sit down with my knee relatively flat and I've still got my finger right where I think the head of that, that piece of my um, femur is. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to find the end of my femur is right here where that middle of that joint. And I'm going to say that's 22 centimeters. Okay, 22 centimeters. That's pretty right. big. Are you going to memorize that? 22, 22 centimeters. centimeters. Okay. Because <laughs> we got to do a little math today. Oh, all more right? math. I know, but math is good, all right? <laughs> so what we see is uh, when we find these long bones that we've talked about today, there are distinct differences uh, between not only ethnicity, but gender as well, right? Because remember we talked about Monday, males and females, our skeletal structure is different, yes. right? God mm -hmm. created us different. And so, you know, females are more slender in structure than males. And so there are distinct differences uh, in the long bones as well, yeah. all right? So if you look up here at this chart, you're going to see how this is broken down for you, all right? Not only is it broken down between the bone, which you see on the left-hand column, all right? but it's broken down by ethnicity within each bone. So here are the different bones listed here. And then for each bone, we have three major groups. Mm -hmm. And then we have next to that in a certain equation by gender. Okay. okay, so I am measuring my femur. I am Caucasian and um, I'm a male. So I'm going to use this equation right up here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take 2.32 and I'm going to multiply the length times the length of my femur is 22 centimeters. And then I'm going to add 65.53. And that gives me 1441. Centimeters. Centimeters. Right. Now, for many of you, you're going to look at that and go, I don't know how many feet that is, right? So the conversion, right, if you're measuring in metric, one inch basically equals 2.54 centimeters. Okay? So you're going to take that and you are going to divide the 14, whatever that was, um, one, 14, 14 four, one. I'm going to, let's do that again because oh, I'm going to add, there's something. let's go back to the formula okay. for just a second because that's way too short for me. Okay, so we have, um, oh, oh, two point, sorry. Um, we have 2.32. Now remember though, you said you are disproportionate. I am. Okay. So that could be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my. I'm going to add two centimeters to my length because. Right. Because technically. From the from the point of where we're measuring to the head of mm -hmm. the femur, so if we think about, I was measuring out here, mm -hmm. but if I add this much more height. Which is internal, so it's. Yeah, good. which right. isn't. It's, it's hard for you to get here. to there because it's right. So the measurement is actually taken from mm -hmm. this point to here. Right. So I'm going to add. I'm going to make that 24. So 2.32 times. 24 
and then add um, 65.5. That something didn't work there. I must have added 2.32 times 24. What am I not doing right? Yep, should be 2.32 2 times 2. 24 plus 65.53. Plus 65.5. I'm only getting 121 now. That's not right. <laughs> what are we Let me try up? it with my calculator. Hold <laughs> <laughs> <Well> on. <done. laughs> 2.32 had this trouble times with Danny the 24 other day too, with Dr. Faulkner. Plus 65.53 equals that divided by 2.54 equals, which would be divided by 12, gives you, yeah, four feet. Four feet. <laughs> That's not, That's that is not right. quite okay. close. If, okay. if you were with us the other day when we, um, when we talked about the golden ratio, we used the giant body caliper on me. Now, I know something about my body. My body is very disproportionate to the general population. So I Definitely. probably don't fit this, because okay, <laughs> right. I am 6'5", a little over 6'5", right. and this is telling me I'm about four feet tall. Right, which is, yeah. And which is obviously mm -hmm. not right. So my torso from my hips up is very long compared to my legs. Um, I have very small feet. Mm. I only wear a size 13 or 14, mm. and I'm, I'm very tall. And my legs are very short. I only wear a 34 inseam in my pant, which would be more common to a six foot tall male right. or so. Right. And so my body actually demonstrates that these are just approximations. They're approximations. Mm -hmm. And if actually, you know, where they get all these from is uh, during World War II and the Korean War is when they actually acquired the, large, the beginnings of the database that we now use. Yes. For anthropological studies, because they um, had the remains of soldiers, right, that they and so were they able were able to, to start catalog, you know, cataloging all this information, mm -hmm. and then create these formulas that we see today. We should have probably tested me beforehand Maybe. to see how <laughs> weird I really was. But. <laughs> but most of the time, I will say, I've done this many times with hundreds of people. Most of the time, you'll get within, I would say five inches yeah. of your height, either above or below. Uh, it's very rarely exact, right? Mm -hmm. And there's many reasons why. One is because it is it is internal. Yes. Uh, and so it's an est you're estimating that measurement, right? It's a lot easier if you just have the actual bone. Yeah. You're a lot more accurate that way. Uh, and another reason is some people just don't measure correctly, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, and it's important to remember too that if you're a uh, child, these measurements are based on adult. adult frame. So you're still growing, and so some of that error could also be due to, uh, you know, the fact that you are still growing and your bones are may not, you know, they're not finished growing and therefore these measurements aren't going to be exact for yeah. you. So. And we have a comment here from Lynette that says, Mr. Patterson looks like a giant next to her. <laughs> <laughs> but I yes. have tiny legs, so that so makes we can up see for that it, right. guess, these but. formulas may not work on giants, right? Yes. <laughs> so. yes. Um, but if we think about the general body proportions, mm -hmm. those are going to work out exactly. Mm -hmm. And of course, you could not only try it with your femur; mm -hmm. you could try it with any of the long bones. Of the of you. Bones. you could estimate so if I did with my, your humerus. My humerus, you know? humerus mm -hmm. I would expect it to come out a little more normal and right. Match it may my be a little better, more close since I know to my accurate. legs are so short. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm hmm. So you okay. can definitely have a lot of fun today with that. We have lots of people um, joining us from all over the country. And there was one question in here, um, I believe it was Craig asked about someone of a mixed heritage. Right. Somebody mm -hmm. who might have Asian and European ancestry somewhere in their family right. or even their parents. How would that affect the types of features that we're looking at in the skull and in those other bones. It would, I mean, most likely be like a combination or based on genetics, it might favor the mother or father mm -hmm. more based on whatever their ethnicity is. Yeah. There's many factors at play there, so. Yeah. And we see that <laughs> mm -hmm. with um, skin color as well. Mm -hmm. We'll see all kinds of different variations. Uh, we do lots of discussion about this. Now you've noticed, hopefully, that we haven't used the word races in our discussion mm -hmm. today. We've actually been using the word ethnicity or people group. Because from a biblical perspective, we don't believe that the idea of races is a good scientific or biblical way to talk about this. From an evolutionary perspective, they believe that these different races evolved in different areas over different times. And that gives a very um, 
a derogatory or demeaning concept because some people would naturally be more evolved or less evolved than others. And this was actually a big feature of Darwin's writing in his book, Descent of Man. He talked about savage races who were closer to the apes than anything else. And of course, which race do you think he chose as the dominant race? His race, his race. the Caucasian race. Because we always like to elevate ourselves and put other people down. But that's the exact opposite mm -hmm. of what we should be doing from a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. And these are all people made in God's image, all descendants of Adam and Eve. So when we think about them as different ethnic groups or people groups, that's a more accurate way to talk about it from a biblical perspective. And even scientists recently, uh, there was a big feature in one of the magazines, I think it was Discover last year, that talked about how race is an invalid concept biologically. Mm -hmm. So even secular scientists are coming to that conclusion as they examine all these different things. Yeah, exactly. All right, so you learned a little bit today about how you can uh, use a little math, all right, to estimate your height and how we use bones to determine that uh, when we find those left behind and we take those clues and then try to gain some information from that uh, so we can learn more about a particular people group. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, let's look at a couple questions we've got here. Ethan, who's five, wants to know if these are real bones. <laughs> no. And if you come in here, I can show you how we know these aren't real bones. You can see this little line, this seam right down here from the mold that made them. Okay, so this is still plastic from when they injected it. These are likely cast from an actual bone. So they would make a mold of this and then cast these from an actual bone. And the same thing with this skeleton. This is a plastic cast of um, those different bones. Um, someone else, uh, I believe it was Stephanie, asked if this was a male or a female skeleton. Uh, Dr. Rivera and I have both looked at it, and from the pelvis, yeah, we're going to say it's kind of neither. It's, it's kind of in between. Most often they make these generic, like, yeah. you know, kind of in between. Cause so it has <laughs> very wide ilium, but it's got a very tight structure in here. So it's kind of an in-between skeleton. Mm -hmm. So it might not be conclusive there. Um, let's see if we've got another question here. Is there a place where we can get this graph? the graph with all the bones. Yes. We are going to try to get an image of this and post it in the comments mm -hmm. uh, to the video. So if you check back um, later today or tomorrow, we'll try and get that. And another way you could access that, if you just rewind the video, you could take a screenshot right mm -hmm. there of the video, you'd, you'd have that table. I'm sure it'd be available online somewhere. Yes. You might be able mm -hmm. to find it as well. You could well. probably find it online. But we'll try, we'll, and get a, yeah, we'll try and get an image of that yeah. in the comments uh, by this afternoon. Okay, somebody's calling me Goliath, I think, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not as tall as Goliath. Uh, but we did have a model of Goliath's spear that yes. another group made, and they have a picture of me holding it, and I look like a tiny little dwarf <laughs> holding this giant spear. So Goliath was much taller than me. Um, okay, so I want to make one more connection here to all of these things we've been talking about. As a ministry, we don't just want to teach you about cool things about science. Yeah, that can point us to God as an amazing creator, but we want to make sure we're communicating the gospel message well. So if we think about the idea of everyone being from one race in Adam, then we all have the same sin nature in us, and that sin nature corrupts us. And we need to have one solution. So if we think back to Acts, 17, we're all made of from one blood. We need one savior to save us. The ultimate goal is the gospel. And we, excuse me, I'm getting a little emotional because this is so important to me. If we don't share the truths of the gospel in all of this, it's just a, a waste of time. If we don't look to Christ, you cannot be saved. We pray that you'll do that today. And we hope that you'll get out and enjoy God's amazing creation. Hello, everybody. And this is a little addendum video to the Science Live that we just shot on forensic anthropology and using that to determine ethnic traits and height. Uh, we did a major blunder in the episode because I used the tool wrong. So a great reminder for all of you to use your, check your measurements, um, check everything twice. 
And uh, the tool that I used, I used this little tape measure. It's marked in inches on this side, and it's marked in inches and centimeters on this side. So I failed to notice that, and I actually measured 22 inches on my femur when I should have measured um, 56 centimeters. So over here on this femur, we want to measure the length of the femur from the tip here to the longest point. So this one measures about 42 centimeters. And I got 22 centimeters, and I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> a little bit shorter than my femur. So if we take the point right here, this part of the femur, and where it articulates against the hip right there, we measure down to the end of the femur, the spot on your knee right there where the joint is. And I take that measurement, I come out to 22 inches, and if I correlate that down below, that's actually 56 centimeters. But because we're measuring to the inside of the bone, we actually want to get uh, at a couple, so 58 centimeters. And that 58 centimeter value, if we take that times 2.32 and add mm -hmm. the 65.53 like we have in our formula, we get 6.56. Which is your Yes, because height. I am um, a little under 6.6, six, so that puts yes. me right around 6.5. And we so, know what this really teaches everybody? In science, you need to measure more than once, yes, right? We that's why we always take multiple measurements. And test and test again. And have somebody else test it. And have and someone sure else right. test it because you can make mistakes. Yes, so thanks to uh, those who caught it in the comments and pointed that out and to our producer who was trying to get me to recognize my error. <laughs> but uh, just a reminder, we can all make mistakes, but correcting them is easy in science if we just use the tools we have available. Um, practice with your tool before you start measuring with it. All right, so thank you for enduring that little, <laughs> that little kerfuffle in the episode, and we hope you have a blessed day and get out and enjoy God's creation.